isn't it the, the mail there that did. unless yeah. they unless they had the first game by Boxing Day, the season was shot. It's gone. Is there a similar sort of? Cut-off date with the NHL? Well, they play that the big winter classic, which is the outdoor game that's been incredibly successful on New Year's Day. So that might be a, a, a target they could aim for because they don't want to miss that. But as I said, I think a couple of weeks ago, there is a history here. And, the, and, and Gary Bettman and the owners allowed a lockout a few years ago, and they came out of it stronger than ever, arguably. So I, my gut feeling is, unlike David Stern, who didn't want his legacy to be tainted by a missed season, I'm not convinced that Gary Bettman doesn't just say, well, we're going to let this thing ride a little bit, because we did it once, we'll do it again. Can you do it twice? I, 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 oh, I it's terrible, it, Alan. It we is did terrible. Talk weeks ago, the impact that, going back, whatever it was, 10 or 12, 15 years maybe, the Major League Baseball, you know, it took so long to recover from, it did. from the I, lockout. I think hockey fans are just a little different because they're so insane about the sport. They're, they remind me of AFL people. They're just so crazy about the game that they're just, uh, you know, they're going to come back even if there is a lockout. Wait, I think set, that's dangerous. Where does it set the NHL? How popular is it? it would, is it nationwide or is it uh, the northern states? It is, it, it, it's a little bit like baseball. That if you've got a hockey team in your town, it's a big in that town, like a St. Louis, for example, a place like that. Um, big in Canada, and that's really driven it. There's been a lot of revenue because the Canadian dollar is up, too. That's the other thing you forget about. It's <laughs> now up to parity or as strong really? as the American dollar. So they can compete, and they're doing very, very well in Canada. The, so uh, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Uh, it's not a thing where... Where America's, you know, it's not like the NFL strike or even the NBA, where it's going to really hit American sports hard. But it's still, it, there's a lot of revenue, a lot of people out there that are going to miss it if it happens. You're not which telling is me really there's a, frightening. There's a team based in Miami, is there? Uh, the Florida Panthers. There is a Miami team. <laughs> so I assume there's no sort of native Floridians sort of playing for them. Well, no, but the big the, it's one of Gary Bettman's big things with the expansion of the Sun Belt, and a lot of people think that's really hurt Nashville and Atlanta and places like that, getting away from the hardcore. Now they're starting to get back to that. They got the team back in Winnipeg. They're talking about maybe one back in Quebec again. But look, as you say, Alan, they've canceled the first couple, and I'm I I would say New Year look to New Year's Day because that's when that big outdoor game is, and I don't think they'd want to miss that. If they miss that, there's a prob- There's many, a big problem. How many games in a season there? 82, 82, just like the NBA. Although I will throw this caveat out there. Playoff hockey is fantastic. So maybe they just start with the playoffs. The playoffs. <laughs> they just seed it, Draw, seed the it playoffs. and have a big tournament. You Why do, not? You need to scratch your head when you're looking at the standings during the baseball season. And just, I mean, 162 62 games. games. Yeah. It's stunning, you know, There's only it? 360. 65 well, that's <laughs> like days a year. I mean, there's a great thing in that Liverpool being Liverpool documentary where Liverpool guys meet the Red Sox guys because they're owned by the same group now, and they're explaining the Red Sox guys explaining how many days off he had. And it's like he's like we have three games here, then we have a day off, then we travel, then we play four games here, then we travel. It's like they have no days off. Now again, it's baseball. You're sitting on your ass half the time, <laughs> yeah. but still, it's uh, a very busy schedule. They do play the uh, they do play the World Series in basically one week. In basically seven or eight days, they play the whole World Series. So there's no resting. Even in the, in the no, in the, yeah, you win a wild card. The Orioles win a wild card. But you biggest game in the franchise since '97. There they go, the Yankees yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Bang! You're right back into it. Mind you, the catcher. I don't know how many relief catchers they have. That's a but, tough job. But they have got the uh, one of the toughest yeah. in sport. That that job, absolutely. Just a, a couple of live scores. Aaron Finch not content with making 154. He's decided to roll the arm over and he's taken a wicket as well, just to <laughs> ensure he gets man of the match honours. Uh, Queensland a nine for 167, uh, chasing 380. And in the Women's World Cup Final, 2020 World Cup Final, Australia are 2 for 85 off 13 overs against uh, England. So uh, England uh, up against it. That's not a bad score Australia are putting on the board. Uh, just before we take a break, just Ed, a, an SMS here from Brendan says, why didn't the NFL uh, be threatened by a lockout with a referee issue, I guess, in, in difference to, say, a player pay dispute? Uh, because uh, I think you can always, as you can see, they played yep. the first few weeks without referee. I mean, they just got replacement referees. Replacement players is a whole different situation. No one's going to pay to see replacement players. They they don't really care that much I, I about don't replacement harp on the referees. They've in the NHL for too long, but they are a long way apart. I mean, they're from, 50, at the moment, last contract, they had 57% yeah, it, of huge. total payments. Yeah. And then now the owners are looking somewhere around. 47 or something. Exactly. I know. It's 43. It's reversed. It's, it's, it's almost reversing the deal. It's That's extraordinary. Exactly They're a long, right. long way out. And it's very dangerous for any organization, yeah, whether it be corporate or a sporting organization. I don't care how strong and powerful you are. To take your supporters, members, fans for granted, very slippery slide. It is. Which I agree. actually brings me to the, um, the referee lockout. 
What would have happened? And of course, everything came to a head last Tuesday the our Green time Bay thing, yeah. with the farcical situation with that uh, that call on, at the end of the game there with the touchdown. If that hadn't have happened, because I mean, you had Barack Obama and Bill Clinton, let alone everybody else, every other commentator, and and everybody was commenting. If that if that call had, you know, had have been correct, let's say, what? Would we still be in the same That's boat? a great question. And, and one of the things you noticed was that Roger Goodell had sent out a memo to all the coaches and players and said, lay off these replacement guys, you know, because pl- coaches were getting out of control, yelling at them, grabbing them. Yeah. We saw that players were getting lippy with them. So they actually sent out this mandate. So I think they would have been prepared to go on. Uh, and I think it would have been solved at some point, but that certainly brought it to a head. Uh, we're going to take a break. This is Bet Stars and Stripes. Thanks to Bet Star. Bet Star have brought back the old favourite double fixed odds from 8 a.m. race day <laughs> on all Group One races this. This is Bet Stars and Stripes with Dr. Turf, Ed Wyatt, and Alice Gander. Welcome back to uh, Bet Stars and Stripes. Alice Scander, Ed Wyatt, and Dr. Turf. Uh, just an update from the cricket. Uh, Queensland 9 for 176, uh, chasing 380 against Victoria and Australia in the Women's 2020 World Cup final. A 2 for 101 of 14.5 over. So looking at a 140 type score, which would be certainly defendable. Cameron 27 not out, and uh, she's leading the way at the moment on strike. Uh, we're going to have a look at some of the games uh, for the upcoming weekend. Let's uh, let's start off by looking at uh, Philadelphia taking on Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh are playing at home. This is live on 1HD at 4am tomorrow morning. Eagles are start of the season 3-1. The Steelers are 1-2 and two, and Pittsburgh are coming in uh, off a bye week and some big names coming in. The market is the Eagles $2.50, the Steelers $1.56. The line there is 3.5 and, and the overs and unders line is 43 points. Look, I think that's probably makes sense. I mean, Philadelphia is coming off this huge emotional win over the Giants. Eagles have won three games by something like a total of 10 points, yeah. I think, or 12, which is unbelievable. Steelers have been on a bye. They, uh, they lose this thing. They go to one and three, mm. and I think they see themselves in big trouble with the Ravens and the Bengals both in the same division at three and one. And I think that's why Pittsburgh's being backed here in this one. That's nice my, to see yeah. uh, Rashad Mendenhall uh, back after. I think he did an ACL, did he not last year? I think year? he did. Yeah. He also, uh, I actually met him. Um, did you? Uh, like, yeah, we went, went right. to one of those media days before yeah. the Super Bowl, and the media days there are astonishing. They, they put our. Um, what they, you know, our codes give the sporting media here. Just it's embarrassing. Even the how, NRL, the NFL, <laughs> they're just so accommodating. You get to talk to any player you want to talk. Yeah, these, these designated media days. He was fantastic. He really, right. really decent fella, and uh, got into a lot of trouble, man, and a year ago with a a, a, a tweet. Did he, he did. not? It was about the World Trade Center. Yeah, and, yeah. He got in a bit of trouble. And over got that. yeah. I yeah, mean, they hammered, to kill him. I yeah. think at one stage, but. And then a month or two later, he did his ACL, and but he does return for the Steelers tomorrow. Yeah, I think. Look, I I would uh, I would think the Steelers would be the the good bet here. I just think at home as well, uh, it's a big battle. I mean, these are two Pennsylvania teams. There's a bit of a rivalry, Western Pennsylvania, Eastern Pennsylvania. But it, I, it's, you know, I say that, but then again, the Eagles have been been able to get it done very ugly this year. Mendenhall also, I think, may have fumbled the ball in that Super Bowl loss to the Packers. He may have. Yeah, actually. I think he did. That does ring a bell. Anyway, yeah, good to see him. turned into a sad story, didn't it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was such, he was such, such a nice, nice fella. <laughs> these, uh, these two teams couldn't have uh, more opposite stories leading into the first or into week five. You've got uh, the Chargers who are standing atop of the uh, the AFC West division. And then you've got the Saints who are at the bottom of the NFC South division. The Chargers are $2.58, taking on New Orleans who are playing at home at $1.53. The line is 3.5 and, and the totals line is 51.5. Can't believe that uh, New Orleans are that short. They're zero and four. That short at a dollar fifty three. I would have thought the Chargers good price two fifty eight. It's it's the thing. It's like you know for what three weeks I came in and said the Saints aren't going to be you know two <laughs> oh and two. The Saints aren't going to be zero oh and three. The Saints aren't going to be zero oh and four. Well, I think that's what people are counting on. They're counting on the emotion of playing at home, of Breeze potentially breaking this record, and the fact that no one can see them start the season zero oh and five. That, that's the only explanation I can have for it. Uh, I don't know. San Diego can put up some numbers, so that that Saints defense is going to be tested. So, uh, yeah, it's a strange one for me. I I think it purely has to be emotion, maybe some voodoo, you know, that New Orleans magic, something like that that people expect going to happen. 
Um, the uh, the next game, and I forgot to mention off the top of this segment that uh, BetStar are offering two dollar power lines on all the NFL games, so you get even money lines uh, for all the games, not only this week but uh, for the remainder of the season. But the next game is on Live One HD, seven fifteen a.m. tomorrow morning. This is a game I will be watching. It takes the two quarterback powerhouses. You've got uh, Peyton Manning leading the Denver Broncos at three dollars thirty. You've got Tom Brady uh, leading New England Pats, who are playing at home, a dollar thirty-five. The line there is six and a half points. The totals line is 52. Great game. Both those uh, quarterbacks have thrown their share of interceptions uh, this year, I noticed. Uh, Peyton and Brady. Yeah. Yeah, they make they the eye they haven't, been, uh, they haven't been uh, error-free. No, they so haven't. Far. Look, but just a, a game to watch. I it is, thought. absolutely. And New England cleaned up Denver last year twice, beat them in the playoffs soundly. But again, that was Tebow. That wasn't Peyton Manning. <laughs> Whole different situation. I think it's a it's a great a great one. Be a good test for both these teams. We talked about the Patriots earlier, that big win over to Buffalo. Are they back? Well, they gave up a lot of points. Denver can score some points. Denver, conversely, huge win over the Raiders. Biggest win over the Raiders since uh, 1960, I think it was. So they really hit them hard. So uh, I think this should be a wide-open, interesting football game. It is crucial because I know it's still, I suppose, early season, but uh, big difference, 2-3 and three and 3-2. Three and two. Yeah, absolutely. You know, they, neither of these two teams want to go down 2-3. and three. No, I agree. Yeah, absolutely no right. And uh, live on ESPN, 11.30 a.m. Tuesday, uh, Houston Texans, who are 4 and zip this season, a magnificent start, have been $1.27 into $1.24. New York Jets, three ninety out to $4.20. The line is a flat nine, and the overs and unders is 40 and a half. Look, this, as I said earlier, I think this is one to watch, whether it's uh, the Jets heroically giving... Texans their first loss or it's the train wreck aspect of of Sanchez imploding and the fans calling for Tebow and booing and I I just think there's so much to watch in this football game and the Jets are really going to have to bring their A game to win this thing and uh, Houston by the same token is going into you know a very difficult place to play a team that's been wounded and has been hammered by the media it's gonna be a great test for both these football teams. Yeah, I think there's going to be some sort of morbid fascination in watching this game because we may be right. see the de- uh, demise yeah. you know, on Tuesday morning of, of one of the, the great franchises in the NFL. Yeah, you could be For right. For the year, I should no, say. No, no, no. You could, yeah, that's right. No, you could be right. I think this is a must-watch. I think the, I think it's going to be a fascinating game. And, and Revis out for the season, is yes, it? Yes, yeah. he is. And He's so done. is Holmes yeah. out for the season? Yeah, that was announced too, San Antonio Holmes. Although I, I did read someone said that the American markets weren't adjusted at all by the news that San Antonio <laughs> Holmes was out for the year. He's had some big drops. They've got other issues. I think that you know they're going to have to deal with that. Uh, and then live on Fox Sport 3, 4 a.m. tomorrow morning, Green Bay Packers $1.35, taking on the Colts, who are playing in Indianapolis. $3.30 has been some specking for the Colts. They've been three forty into $3.00. 30. The line there is a flat seven, uh, and the overs and unders line is 48. Have you seen the number one draft picks first uh, four weeks, Ed? Good, very good. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm prejudiced. Andrew uh, Luck went to Stanford, with the same school I went to, so I've got a little bit of soft spot What's for the him. relevance? But that? he's, well, I mean, I don't want you to think that I'm just blowing some smoke because he's a Stanford <laughs> guy. He's as talented as a, a, a young quarterback as we've seen come along in a long time. He's made some bad throws in that first game through some interceptions, but he's not the kind of kid that's going to let that ball. Him. And I think that's why, you know, against a weak Packer defense, I think they could make some yardage. I think it'd be very interesting to see, especially at home. Luck's been very, very solid. So the uh, the Super Bowl market started to take some shape. The uh, the Texans lead that market. They've started the season four and zip. They've been six fifty into five seventy five over the last week. Uh, the Forty ers are into seven dollars. The Pats seven fifty. Atlanta they've started four and zip as well. What an amazing start! They're eleven dollars mm. into eight dollars fifty. The Ravens nine dollars fifty. The Packers ten dollars. Chicago. They've been hard to read. The last couple of weeks, they've been good. They're into $19. The Cardinals, 